Hello readers, I'm Amy and today I am going to do a standalone review for XX by Angela Chadwick. I have my notes here because it's been like a month, I think, or two months since I read this and I just haven't sat down and gotten to actually doing the review for whatever reason. But um, I had this book on my wish list for like the longest time and then Shannon from 155 Books actually sent me a copy which was super sweet of her. Sorry that it took me so long to get around to reading this. But I just, I kind of fell in love with it and I actually have a kind of project in mind. So I, after this video, after talking to Victoria from what Victoria read several weeks ago, I am finally actually going to go to the post office and send this to her because I thought it would be fun with the topic of this book to do kind of like a game of telephone. So I'm going to send this to her and see if she'll give it a read and then maybe send it off to someone else. And I also put my name on the first page, my general location, Montana, US, and the year that I read it. And I just want to see like where this book goes and what kind of discussions people end up having from it. Um, before I continue, please like, subscribe, be my friend on social media. Please, please leave a comment down below on your thoughts on this book and this review so that I know that like you're here, you're watching the videos. Um, just kind of see like what kind of content people are engaging with. But yeah, let's get on to it. So this book is called XX. That is referring to chromosomes. Female born people have XX chromosomes, generally speaking, and male born have XY. Sometimes there is an extra chromosome. I believe the extra chromosome is when Down syndrome occurs, but don't quote me on that because it's been a little bit since I've looked into chromosomes. Um, I always found it interesting that historically men blame women whenever they don't have sons, but it's the male chromosome <laughs> that can determine the sex of a child. Uh, because they have both X and Y. So the chromosomes. We have our main characters, Jules and Rosie. They are a lesbian couple. They've been together, I believe, for like 10 years. Rosie really wants children and Jules doesn't for multiple reasons. And then this trial comes up where there is a medical college that is going to be conducting a trial for ovum to ovum fertilization. And Jules sees Rosie interacting with the child and realizes that they could maybe have a child together instead of adopting or instead of using something like IBF with a sperm donor, they could actually do ovum to ovum and it would be fully their like blood related child. This can get really complicated for me as someone who's adopted, but this is the general conversation of this book. And so they decide like, okay, let's go ahead and apply for this trial. Jules is like, we can do this. We can become moms. It would be ours. Um, and I will say Jules is not a particularly likable character, at least for me. She's very defensive, very protective of the people around her, which as this book goes on, you can see why. Um, but I don't think a character has to be likable for a book to have some really good points. So Jules is a newswoman. She's tried to get into um, like the bigger news publications and stuff, but ends up just sticking around with this job, which isn't great, but like it pays the bills. She gets her work done, but she's really overworked and overtired. Whereas Rosie, I believe she works in a bookshop, if I remember correctly. But with the focus on this ovum to ovum medical trial, as you can imagine, things get pretty crazy. And that was really, really a strong suit of this book is we just kind of watch society fall apart at the seams. You have these really extremist politicians and you have like the Christians with their sermon TV shows, kind of like the, is it the 700 Club? There's like a 700 Club-esque TV show. You have a local politician who's just very, very against this trial. And we also talk about HIPAA violations. So you have seven-ish couples who are taking part in this particular ovum to ovum fertilization. And very few of those actually end up turning into pregnancies. We're not only walking through the political landscape, but also 
kind of the unpredictability of fertile fer, fertility fertility science and actually like being pregnant because that's not something that's easy to do they're conducting this trial combining the ovums of two females which is difficult enough and different from a typical IVF where you might use sperm and then you have this pregnancy that you're trying to get to take to latch on and then you're walking through this pregnancy like how is it developing are there going to be any abnormalities from having these two ovums create this baby um and there's a lot of like fear mongering so I really want to kind of dive into the politics with this book which it was just so realistic to me because particularly now I feel like we have a very toxic political landscape since 2016 it's just gotten so hard to be in the world sometimes but you have these people who are like oh ovum to ovum fertilization is awful as you can imagine a point that comes up is women are going to take over the world because with a male xy chromosome set and a female XX, they could have an XX child or an XY child. With using female ovum solely to create, create a child, you are guaranteed that the child will be female at birth. Um, and they're like, oh, all these lesbian couples are going to get together and have female babies and there's not going to be any men left in the world. And then it's not just going to be lesbians, it's going to be two female best friends who want another female child in the world. And it's just going to be the end of everything. And it really reminds me of the, uh, what is it called, gender side in places like India where there's this idea that when you have a girl child, she has to get married. She has to go out into the world to get married and we have to give her a dowry. Like, you're essentially paying the husband to marry your daughter and that's very costly and a lot of female babies are killed because of this. Or I believe this even plays into the one-child policy in China where female babies are less desired. I don't know as much about that situation. But we dive into that a lot, where it's, it's, instead of killing baby boys, you're just not making any baby boys. And of course, this is not how the world works. Yes, some lesbians will be trying ovum to ovum fertilization, because like any straight couple who wants to become parents, I shouldn't say any straight couple, like a lot of straight couples who want to become parents, they want the child to be born of the two of them, not a sperm donor, not an egg donor, not an adoption. Like, we want to try having a child of our own first. It's sometimes a little cheaper, it's sometimes a little less harrowing and difficult of a process, depending on who you are. Like, I feel like every couple that wants children most often has the desire to create their own children first before considering other options. That's only natural. Like, boys aren't going to die out. <laughs> and if anything, with the gender side in India or like in China, having all these girl babies, maybe it'll actually balance things out. I don't know. I'm, I'm completely guessing here. But I love that this dove into that. We also... This happens relatively early on. I'm trying not to really spoil anything with the story. I think I'll be able to keep this mostly spoiler free and still have an interesting review. But with Jules being a newswoman, she knows how the news cycle works. She writes a lot of articles. She conducts a lot of interviews. And her boss is horrible. He's, he's so sexist. He's very buddy-buddy with another male co-worker of hers in the office. They're always picking on her, giving her the less interesting assignments, expecting more of her while considering her as less of a person. And it's just very demeaning. Um, and while working in this news cycle, the personal information of Jules and Rosie is released into the world from someone inside the trial. So then you also kind of get into medical ethics there, where like, what are the ethics of 
creating this first ovum to ovum child and having their information out there. Are we going to be conducting a lot of testing on this baby? Are we going to just let them be? And with this sexist boss who's learning that his employee is part of this trial, it's like, well, you need to write an article about yourself and give away all of your secrets and answer all of our questions. And in suddenly having herself in the spotlight, similar to celebrities in our culture, they're expected to give up everything of themselves. We deserve to know every aspect of your life, every aspect of the sex you have. We need to know everything about you because you're this big figure and everyone knows who you are, so we need to really know how who you are. You owe that to us. Great exploration of that concept, how it's not true, how people deserve to have personal lives no matter what they're doing in their public life. Um, I need to look back over my notes, like am I missing anything here? Um, oh, sperm donors. There is a friend of the couple who once wanted to be considered for a sperm donation at some point and he kind of struggles. Sorry, my camera's still not focusing quite right. He also really struggles with this ovum to ovum fertilization. Um, not as strongly as some of the extremists around, but it's still like him kind of wanting to be useful and feeling like he's not as involved as he wants to be, even though he's not part of the couple. So you also have these really complex family and friend relationships, um, particularly with the parents of Rosie and Jules. They have a lot of different ideas of how this trial should be done, what's wrong with this trial, what's good about this trial, what does it really mean to build a family. Um, there is, like, underlying homophobia in that, where openly they're like, we love you, you're our child, this person is your partner, that's great, but then also this kind of expectation of, well, this isn't typically how children are made. And lastly, there is also this kind of process of thinking of, like, what is it to be a mom? So I stated at the beginning that Jules didn't really want to have children until she heard more about ovum to ovum fertilization. And we're really kind of digging into her thoughts throughout the trial, throughout the pregnancies, and the discussion where she's like, do I want to be a mom? Is being a mom worth all of this pain and trial whenever it comes to the medical trial and me having this public face and our lives are going to be in the spotlight for the rest of time. Like, is it worth it to be a mom in that kind of situation? And I love that Chadwick really makes us question that and think about it because we're so encouraged to have kids to make the next generation, but we're not encouraged to think about the costs of having that. Um, particularly in like special situations like this, what is the cost of having that? For me, with being adopted, it's should we do an open adoption or a closed adoption? How much of a relationship will this child have with their biological family should we do this open adoption? What's that relationship going to be like as they grow older and become their own person? I just loved that we had those complex conversations. And I would love to see what other people think of this book, what kind of conversations we can generate. So yeah, I'm going to play a little game of telephone with Victoria and see where this book goes. Um, that is going to be it for me. Please let me know all of your thoughts down below. I think that this book is just a fascinating discussion topic. Please like, subscribe, be my friend on social media. I will see all of you in my next video. Bye, friends.